Thank you. Call the meeting to order. We have the motion moved by Councilor Morio, second by Councilor Delore, resolved that the agenda for the March 6, 2018 regular meeting council be received. Discussion? All in favor? We have the motion moved by Councilor Morio, second by Councilor Delore. Resolved with the minutes of the February 20th, 2018 Special Meeting Council on the February 20th Regular Meeting Council be adopted as received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. First item on our agenda, we have Chief Fedorchuk. Welcome to our Council meeting, Chief Fedorchuk. Good evening. It's been a while since we met, so I thought I'd come in and just fill you in what's happening in our world. So to date, the Swanner Fire Department responded to a total of 25 calls this year. Uh, 15 calls within the town limits, consisting of one structure fire, two smoke showing, one vehicle fire, three motor vehicle incidents, three alarm calls, three false alarms, one CO alarm, and one power line down. Uh, we responded to seven incidents in the municipality of Swan Valley West. Uh, two structure fires, a vehicle fire, two motor vehicle incidents, one false alarm, and one response to an uncontrolled burn. We've also responded to three incidents, incidents in the municipality of Minnetonas Bozeman, uh, one industrial fire, one motor vehicle incident, and one structure fire. Uh, to date, we've accrued 485 man hours in responses. Uh, to give you a comparison, last year at this time, we recorded 11 calls and had 140 man hours in responses. Uh, in 2017, we had a total of 109 calls, which is our second highest as a department, uh, for 1,659 man hours. Incidents that involve our joint departments, working with Thomas Bozeman, uh, have gone very, very well. Uh, we've integrated together quite smoothly, and it's been a big benefit for our department. Um, our training is ongoing. Uh, we have firefighters enrolled in level one accreditation, real company officer courses, hazardous material response courses, fire ground management, heavy vehicle extrication, and we also have our regular bi-monthly sessions at the fire hall. Uh, our firefighter numbers have stayed steady at 23, with an average of 10 firefighters responding to incidents. Um, but we're planning on having an open house and recruitment night in May, early June, uh, just to see if we can get some interest and keep our numbers a little higher. Currently, the department is reviewing its guidelines and policies and updating them. They're about four years old, so we're gonna give them another look at. Fire inspections are ongoing, uh, and we're doing more and more joint occupancy inspections with our building inspector uh, and all the new buildings around town. Uh, currently, we're reviewing a list of any fire damaged properties in the town, and we'll be forwarding recommendations uh, once we do a, compile that list and, and do an investigation with them. Uh, fire department tours uh, are starting to come, requests are starting to come in from the schools and stuff. Uh, it's that time of the year. Spring is coming, everybody wants to get out and see stuff. And we're also doing emergency standby at the Billy Beagles Fishing Derby on the 17th. Right now we're prepping for either grass fire season or flood season, depending on how much snow we get, and how the weather goes from here. And on a good note, in mid-December, the breathing air compressor uh, owned by the OFC was replaced in our fire hall. Uh, three additional cascade bottles were added, and doubles our air capacity and increases our filling time. Any questions to the Chief? Councillor Delore and then Councillor Morio. Um, for the for the Billy Beal, is that fee for service or, or how? No, that is a public education combination goodwill thing okay. that we've been doing. Uh, a few years ago, they had one of their entrants break a leg in the middle of the ice and had no way to get them in. So it's basically our snowmobile on our blog and then two guys who volunteer their time to do it. Okay. And uh, you mentioned about you're looking to do some recruiting. What what historically has been our number? You say we have 23 now. What? Anywhere between 18 and 23 is our average. Um, with more and more shift work and guys unavailable during the day, like I said, our responses have gone from about 14, 15 firefighters to call down to 10. Uh, we're just looking to increase our numbers and to cover the slow times. What, co what kind of turnout do you get from the 23 firefighters for the bi-weekly training and stuff like that? 18, 18, 18. 19. It's uh, usually our paramedic firefighters who are on shift that don't make it, otherwise everybody's there. Okay. One last question. You've had your new SCVAs for probably getting close to a year now, eh? Um, October they came in, yeah. Oh, so it's only six months. How, how are you guys like? Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. 
um, couldn't ask for a better piece of equipment. Uh, we've utilized them at all of our structure fires. Uh, Tim Rick's fire was a good example of how the imagers have, have really worked well. Um, stopped the big loss there just by the thermal imaging. Haven't had um, any issues with them? Or? Not a one. One thing, too, mm -hmm. just today that uh, Councilor White and myself and NLI Wojciech met with the people from Living Word Bible College and he offered, they have a classroom there, probably the whole 35 or 40 people said it, and maybe an emergency people need a classroom to do something okay. like a fire department or EMT or police, he said, free of charge. Okay, perfect. Councilor Friesen and Councilor Moore. He's first. Okay. Um, with, uh, in Bozeman Fire Department and stuff that into backing them up a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, how do you see that, or is it going to have a negative effect on your uh, hours? Or not much. The biggest draw on hours this year was the LP fire. It was eleven and a quarter hours that we were out. Um, that was a mutual aid call. It was an automatic aid, an automatic aid call. Uh, we were responding regardless to anything of that size. Uh, it's, otherwise, they're not making a big dent. I mean, they're maybe an hour call out. Is our standard one hour? Yeah, because I'm just looking at the one here, um, four hours and stuff like that. So, yeah. so you're saying you don't have any concerns at this point? Not, not at this point. Budget no. pressures for no. backing them up. Yeah, like I said, our biggest budget pressure was the LP fire. Councilor Friesen. Uh, is Tara back? Back. She was never away. She was never away. No. She... I just think that we should acknowledge her award that she got when she. Uh, Pastor. As a as a department, we congratulated her. That was uh, as an EMS technician. Um, I just saw her picture in the yeah, paper, and I yeah. thought maybe we should send a card or do something to say good on you, congratulations. Could we do that? Mm -hmm. Good. Team so. If RMX was going to start a fire department, so they be two. Best gas, two, two pieces of equipment, a minimum 10 men, a building. How much? Out of the sky, that cost a million dollars? Or more than that. Two uh, million? Uh, uh, any type of a pumping apparatus to do first in an attack is going to be anywhere between 350000 and half a million dollars. Um, just to use our 2010 example, it's what, $460,000. Uh, turnout gear now runs anywhere between $1,800 and $2,500, if not more, depending on what you spec out. Uh, training is a big dollar. Fire health itself, depending on what you're designing, anywhere between $1 and $5 million for, for basic stuff. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, thanks, Darren. Thank you. Good job. <coughs> Okay, under correspondence, we have a reminder from AMM of the district resolutions, the deadline of June 1st, and a different procedure. Normally, what would happen at the AMM district meeting, the resolution committee would get together and look at the uh, resolutions and classify them uh, at the meeting. Now, I'm not sure how they're going to do it, but that committee is going to classify them before the meeting. Okay, under new business. Uh, we have the email from the Swan Valley Cheetahs Gymnastic Club asking if there's a possibility that they could open the wellness center to accommodate uh, the people that are visiting for their competition. I think it's a great idea. Uh, I echo that. Like, if there's that, there's you know, people wanting to use it as something that's. Mm -hmm. So we'll look at, talk to Patty and have her set up some hours and things with. Them. They're willing to buy some passes for some of the coaches and things too. So. Okay, continuing on. The Clean Water and Wastewater Fund uh, extension request. Derek, do you have anything on that? Uh, just at the 6th Avenue lift station, the projected substantial completion date is now uh, mid-April, so I've got a formal request into the uh, Secretariat to extend our our uh, completion deadline to May 31st. 
<clears throat> Councilor Delorier. So what's happened with this one? Because the the other one down by Hayes didn't seem to take nearly this long. It was. It's mostly due to hydro. Like we had, oh, right. we had regional inspectors from the Paw and Dauphin on the other projects, and anything in the past, they're now coming from Winnipeg. So they come every six weeks, they say, and we we missed an inspection by three days, I believe it was. So we had to wait an extra six weeks, and then during that time, our subcontractors had. Well, I don't want to say that. There's been issues with our subcontractors that we didn't know about, we just found out last week, personal issues. Uh, that along with him getting other jobs to keep his guys busy, uh, extended us to March 19th is the new date for the change order. So we've, we've basically told the general that it's not entirely his fault, these, these long delays, but they are, we've already got, had to get an extension on our very large grant, so we will go after it. Uh, like what the contract says, we'll penalize him if there's any further delays. So with the uh, lack of hydro, hydro inspectors in the paw, is that because that they don't have them there anymore, or it's just no, there's nobody in that position right now? Or why can't we get the regional inspector from the paw? I don't know if they just... They stopped having regional inspectors, or all I know is that the inspectors come from Winnipeg now, it's a hydro change. Hmm. So we have to schedule inspectors from Winnipeg. I'm guessing that's a cost cut. So that'd be something going forward on future projects is where yep. having to base yep, project is, points based on that, their schedule or when they're coming out. Yeah, this would be the industry changing or adapting to that. Scheduling. <coughs> Matching. Okay, any other questions to Derek? Did you have a resolution under there? Uh, I know I have it. I don't know if I put it under as a resolution. I added it to the agenda. If, if I didn't get a number assigned to it, it probably didn't print, right? So then you don't have it. I'm just looking through it now. I don't remember it printing. When you click on the item, like I did. Yeah, I don't have it. Do you have a with me? If you could just write it. So, no, I don't. Derek, we'll get it So, continuing on RISE, uh, this was discussed at our last RISE meeting. Uh, looking forward to the upcoming year. Uh, what they want is some input from all the municipalities, up to five ideas of what they think RISE should focus on. So, one of the main focuses last round was tourism and, and so they're looking for some ideas from all the councillors so some of the councils say that uh, you know, they have no input here's their chance to have some input on the direction that it takes so you don't have to do them now you can think them about them and get them into uh, council sackle so what I'm supposed to speak oh go ahead oh sure. okay <laughs> I'm thinking the, uh, the living room Bible college having the potential to bring in roughly 300 people of which maybe a third might stay and buy homes and raise families and get jobs would be high on my list of things because you know if, if we could bring 300 people perfect case scenario into our community wouldn't that be a wonderful thing so uh, we'll talk I'll talk more about that later on the report <coughs> and uh, so we've got a year of tourism I, I think tourism can do, do a project in a year uh, and how do we evaluate the success of the tourism goals, because I think tourism is still something that we need to tap into. Okay, the other one, the email notice from our EMO officer on Spring River breakup, just to start to get things sort of lined up just in case something happens. The last report before the last big snow that there was not much danger of flooding. Now you may have to revise that flood forecast and see what happens in the next period of time. And Ken had reminded me that we had talked about maybe sending some letters to the owners from those properties on the Long River. Just a uh, you know, spring flooded letter. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Ken's also asking if we put a link or something. 
to, from our website to the Facebook account that we have mm -hmm. um, to let people know just in general flood preparation and stuff. I think with the mayor's comments about the precipitation we've had the last week or two, it was really uh, important that we do that. Okay, Airport Admin Grant, I'm not sure about that. We talked briefly before council about uh, the airport having a bit of a surplus and that maybe our airport commission people can take the idea of uh, using that amount of money to offset the cost for this year. Um, this um, agenda item was actually, uh, we talked about it at the airport commission meeting, remember, Dwayne, about the $4,800 annual provincial grant that we receive every year for the airport operating, and it's been the same for 20 years? 20 some years. So, Dwayne had an idea that perhaps we should maybe talk to somebody about that, write a letter to somebody about considering you know, that amount being increased since it hasn't I'm changed. Thank you. We want to maybe research that ahead of time because I think the actual operating event from the airport is $2,400. And for some reason, ours has been doubled up all the time. So. <laughs> We just want to keep your mouth shut. That's what I suggested to <laughs> do a little research ahead of time and see what, what Roblin and Shoal Lake and those kind of places get. And Dauphin for not doing that. But then, if it is, then you go for it, I would say. We have the motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor Friesen, resolved that the Thomas Swan River fill out a completion deadline request and apply to the Manitoba Strategic Infrastructure Secretariat to extend the Clean Water and Wastewater Fund project completion date from March 31st, 2018 to May 31st, 2018. Discussion? Favor? Carried. Water bottle donations, I don't know that. There's nothing on there. Um, Bev had phoned me Bev Cole from Swan Valley Swan Valley Community Center, okay. and she wanted to know if the town would donate 10 to 15 cases of water, um, mostly for some parenting courses that they're involved in, just to have bottled water. I, I contacted uh, Councillor Sackle about it. Councillor Sackle. Yeah, Julie sent me an email just asking uh, the request from Bev and. You know, I wasn't willing to answer for council what we wanted to do. There's so many organizations out there that, you know, would love water donated to them, and I think uh, donating to one, and not everybody is kind of uh, something that I'm not too interested in. I, I guess we've got two pallets left uh, that we're trying to sell. I guess if worse comes to worse, we don't sell it, then we, we decide what we're going to do with it, but I don't think at this point I'd be willing to break up a pallet and give one good organization water without giving to another. Kinsman already bought two pallets from us. It's not really fair for us to give another uh, organization free water. So that's just my two cents. But I just said, well, council, like council decide I can't. It's not my water. I'm not sure the fire department will use that water up like our own or even our guys when they're doing water main breaks and stuff. We, we go, we, the town uses bottled water. Yeah. Okay. Can we go to that? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, okay. Next item is the sale of the property, 122 Fifth Avenue North. We have the motion moved by Council Memorial, second by Council Delorio, resolve the purchase of lot five, of lot five, block eight plan. 3210 Civic Address 122 Fifth Avenue North for $8,500 from Joel Delore be accepted. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. We have a Superintendent Works Report. Any questions to Derek? Councillor Jacobson. So, Derek, you said that you are. Uh, suffering some lack of manpower right now for the, the listed uh, information there for us. With the snow removal and all that, I know that we're going to be delayed at least a day, right? A day and a half. Or a day probably. and a half. Have, have you, 
considered maybe contracting any of those areas out since we, we, we don't have the manpower, so we're not necessarily paying for it. So, well, just the four that are listed there, the ones that are, I guess we, we are paying for the one on maternity leave and stress leave, long-term disability. And then we had three guys calling sick and two guys couldn't come in because the plows, they were stuck at home. So we just had, today we just could not get the greater out because of the water break, the airport cleaning, and the garbage truck. <clears throat> that took all our seven guys. So, sure, go ahead. Uh, no, I never did consider uh, contracting because that is just a straight out added cost to our okay. budget. And I figured um, we could move. So they're going to be starting cleaning late or early tomorrow morning then or? Tonight. Tonight. I should say early tomorrow. Well, like what time are you saying? Three. Three? Okay. And what areas are they going to start in? Uh, they're, we've already done, they're probably going to end up redoing 3rd, but uh, they'll be doing 1st Street North, 1st Street South, 2nd Street North. So not necessarily downtown then? Uh, it, like if, when they do 1st Street North, depending when they get to the post office, like sometimes they'll clear the post office out because they know that's a busy spot, they won't do downtown tonight. No. We have an inexperienced greater operator tonight. Sorry? There's an inexperienced grader <coughs> operator starting the rotation tonight, so we've told him to stay on straight streets. So when do you think downtown will be done then? Hopefully the next night. Okay. Council <coughs> Deloria. So how, how are we doing with our potential agreement with the province for clearing out parking lanes? Uh, the last contact I had, uh, we discussed the, my proposal to MIT. Uh, I talked to them, I believe, 10 days ago or early last week. Uh, or sorry, would have been the Friday before. Anyways, they want to, they are right now drafting an agreement and sending it to us for a, like I proposed to them an annual payment. They want to see a water, water equivalency melt and a cost per centimeter of water. So I'm just waiting for their, their agreement to review and it'll hit council when we, when we get it. Can you give them a call and light a fire under them? Yeah. Yeah. We start we start dealing with this in in November and it's now March. Yes. So Councilor Morio and then Councilor Jacobson. Uh, back to your manpower issues here. The, a number of them are like long term ones. Um, have we looked at like term employees or even how cool of casuals that can be called in to <coughs> spell off some of these ones? Uh, I do have I do have our seasonal on right now and one of them one of the other ones is the one that's off. Uh, both of them were on. I never had a chance to lay them off in the end of January or February. We were just so busy. So our budget right now does not have a, uh, a seasonal. I can always add one, but our numbers are going up. Right now we're using our seasonals uh, for the work that needs to be done. And you have no pool of casuals that can be called in or whatever. Councilor Jacobson. Back on that slower move, I was just thinking that, you know, with the success of our Facebook page, that I wonder if we can get some information as far as the areas where we're going to be targeting in the next few days. Maybe we can put that on that Facebook page. So just to inform people of the areas where, you know, we'll be focusing on and, and maybe, you know, keeping their vehicles out of those areas if it's done overnight. Yeah, we have a map that has priorities, and they follow the priorities in different colors. We can definitely put that. On. Okay. Focus on like, say, like for tomorrow night or whatever. You put this is the area that's being cleaned, and then date it the following day. Thanks. Any other questions to Eric? Okay, we have the motion moved by Councilor Delorier, second by Councilor Morial. Resolve that the Superintendent Works Report be received. Discussion. All in favor. Has a copy of the handy van report. Any questions to Julie on the handy van report? 
If not, we have the motion moved by Councillor Delore, second by Councillor Morio, result that the handy van report for February 2018 be received. Discussion? In favor? Opposed? Carried. We have the motion moved by Councillor Delore, second by Councillor Morio, result that the fire department report for February 2018 be received. Discussion? Councillor White. Uh, this 321 Main Street was the undetermined. Is that the one that the property wasn't grounded appropriately? Or was it concerned by some council? And then as a consequence of that discussion, we asked a letter to go out their water systems, that they were all grounded appropriately. Did that letter go? And I'm not sure what we asked to do. We had, we had asked for them to send out a letter to any that had been done in the last 10 years, I thought. Did the letter end up going out? To which, sorry? To the, uh, any, anywhere we would have replaced uh, metallic piping with non-metallic piping. Oh, uh, I know that uh, we drafted a letter. I don't know if they've actually gone out yet. Okay. I know it's been drafted. I just could get back to you to see if it actually went out, if it melted out. I hired a very expensive uh, electrician to come and check mine. It didn't take him long at all. No, I didn't. Just look. All in favor? Carried. Okay, Council has a copy of the management minute meetings. Any questions to Julie? No? So reports. Julie, you can report first. We'll change the order tonight. I wanted to miss your report because I was sick last week. But I'm starting to... Um, I did talk with uh, Maxine from Riverview Condos and Suites and um, she's <coughs> wanted to know if uh, council would be available for a site meeting over there um, on Thursday this week. Is that right for anybody? Whatever Where time? <laughs> well, it's basically whatever time you can arrange to most of you being there. They will be there all day. Riverview condos and suites. That's by the river. The old oh, skyline. There. Mm -hmm. How about at six o'clock or something like that? Mm. No. Go be before that. Yeah, I can't uh I'm meeting that. after that too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's Thursday the eighth, um like eleven thirty AM. These men working guys are out. I'm I'm on nights all this week so I, I can do the morning. Like for me, this week is is okay. Like seven thirty work. <laughs> in the morning. Well, like ten thirty. No, I'll be in bed by then. Nine thirty. And you wake up not one. Mm, probably two, two thirty. Two thirty would be good because then our meeting would yeah, be done. Because yeah. we have a one to two. So yeah, if we do this, then around okay. three, two thirty, three o'clock. Two thirty. Yeah. Yeah. Who's this with? Riverview condos. This is regarding the road? Yeah. So Derek had a meeting with them about that. Anything you can share from that meeting? Uh, other than I just basically, I would expect a presentation they did. I'm not going to, they asked me not to say, uh, there's more information that's coming that you guys are going to get at this meeting. So it's, uh, I just don't, I don't want to cross any okay. lines they asked me not to say, so I'm not going to. So we'll just okay. wait for it then. Yeah. <clears throat> this is on site, this meeting at 2.30? 2.30. Yeah. You, did you allude to a meeting before that? What? Uh, uh, Morio and I have a meeting. Uh, one. Okay, good. So but that's the eight. We do have a good case at 2.30. Yeah. Thank you. I'll let her know. I don't know. Okay, where are we at here on the reports? We're still with Julie? Yeah, yeah I'm good. Yeah. Councillor White. Well, I'm going to go fast, eh? I had the pleasure of traveling with uh, the mayor and Julie to the Dauphin to meet with the RCMP executive branch to talk about budget and billing, and I think you all will have a copy of that. <coughs> you know, they charge us, so to elaborate, it was, it was very interesting. What a tour of the building, and you get a chance to see that building. There's so much happening inside there, and I'm sure they will show you around. 
On the 22nd, I met with the medical service team, the MLA, the mayor, two PMH staff, and two doctors. Extremely pleased with the cooperation that our community is giving them to date. And they talked about the possibility of buying some uh, high-tech equipment, which are optimistic. Bottom line is running out of space. But they need some space. Uh, then uh, on the 22nd, I had a telehealth PMH again, and there's uh, concerns relative to anesthesia specialists in other areas than Swan River, so that's a, that's a hot topic. Uh, the 23rd, I met with the Syrian Refugee Committee. I appreciate you so much, you guys, getting me on there. And there's some uh, getting the person a, a job is uh, difficult to say the least. 23rd, I represented the mayor and the council at Dr. Theodore's retirement dinner. I thought it was a half hour, it was five hours. But it was funny, it must be 300 people there. And uh, we brought greetings on behalf of you guys. And what a wonderful job he's done for us in, in the valley. Uh, I met on the 23rd also uh, with the counselor at the high school in uh, the regional school, whatever. And what they want to do is get a physio, a nurse, a doctor, and then meet with, uh, with students who are interested, grade 11 to 12 students who are interested in taking those locations and maybe encourage them to come back and get somebody from the <coughs> foundation, from our council and those other areas, docs and nurses, to talk about uh, what we can do to help them. The airport commission uh, meeting, Apparently I missed one part there. Uh, no answer yet uh, relative to something's changed uh, relative to why they didn't accept our putting the high-tech solvent on the ice. Nothing yet. That was a concern. The budget, uh, we have a new member of the Airport Commission, Gary Burnside, who certainly brought some wisdom to the table, asked a lot of good questions. And there was also the, also the possibility of us providing land to a developer to build a hangar out there I'm not sure when we'll talk about but my personal thought was to give the land to that developer for a dollar, some sort of clause you've got to build in time because if we can have an airport running regularly, uh, regular air service, that would be so fantastic for the community as a whole, as, a, as we all know, dozens of reasons. Uh, I met with Dougal Lamont and John Gerard, and uh, number one concern I think we said was a CT scanner. We bought it for our community after 15 different things. What's number one? I think we went to the CT scanner. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. The 53rd parallel. Which is involved with the CT scan. Because we have the 53 parallel, more people come here for the CT scan. rascal. <laughs> uh, it was an interesting meeting. And I had two uh, telehealth meetings with Prairie Mountain Health. And uh, we gave them the uh, message that we are as a community looking at buying a CT scan. Apparently she knew that already, but we thought it was important to tell Penny Gilson that, so she wasn't thinking she was getting in around, but she was very they're aware of it. And they're till, still trying to tighten up the budget for Prairie Mountain Health. There's some uh, significant issues. The first request for, uh, I think it was 5% there a year ago. We haven't had any reply from government yet for our suggestions. So we don't know where they're going. Uh, MP, MLA, and citizens, relatives of citizens, concerns, and their privacy, I should say. At our meeting today with uh, Glenn and myself, the mayor's worship, and uh, Ralph Betcher the, and his wife, I guess who lead the uh, Community Bible Foundation, whatever the title Living is. Bible College. Thank you. They're looking long term, not to distant future, 200 to 300 people. And uh, that would be wonderful. I know the MP is looking into it, trying to help us. And I know Rick is on it, like he does. It's, and uh, the mayor is uh, writing letters also. So that, I, I was really uh, impressed with their operation over there. Thank you. So Sackhoff, did you read? Geez, uh, with being away, I missed uh, missed one meeting and uh, having some water issues of our own at work. Missed uh, the airport commission meeting, so not too much to report this week. Uh, I was fortunate enough to go to two community events, not really town business, but uh, went to the Bellside Community Poker Derby, which was outstanding. The little community did a great job. 210 snowmobilers and uh, a meal that was as good as any anywhere in the in the, in the world basically so it was a great event and then uh, went to another community event was the Kinsman Kinsman put on a rally in Bozeman and it was another great social event and raising money for the community but uh, that's basically all I got to report thank you Councillor Friesen um, I have the registration form for Communities in Bloom. I think it's a resolution that everybody's in favor of us being evaluated. <coughs> Excuse me, and judges coming again. Um, I had a short meeting with uh, 
services to seniors this, after, this morning, and there was five nurses from uh, <coughs> UCN that are almost done their LPN training, May, and they wanted to know about medical age friendly. So Kay and I just um, played the CD for them or the DVD, and uh, we're going to try and um, get a committee together again. It's kind of gone by the wayside. My fault entirely because I haven't gone around to get in a meeting. So anyway, that's a good thing. And um, Michelle, that was there, thinks an assisted living location in Swan River would be excellent, and I agree with her. And she's wondering about uh, getting a place instead of actually going and building something new. That there's existing locations here that can be used for that. So that was a good meeting. I also met with the Liberal leaders and I enjoyed that and I like that uh, parallel thing being changed. Um, <clears throat> I have settlement services and a library meeting next week and I was up to the ski hill and watched this guy ski if you can believe it. That's a cat. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wonderful place out there, honest to goodness. It's really, really a nice location. Councilor Moore. I um, had the, the lunch meeting on the 22nd with the Medical Services Committee where the, or the two uh, girls from PMH there that look after the things have highlighted the uh, successes that were to date and I think the number was like 1,800 new <coughs> clients signed on in the last few months um, to the clinic. Um, but they also identified some of the shortfalls that as a committee and as a community so we have to look at addressing and going from there and going from there. Um, and then also met with the Liberal leader Douglin, Douglin Lamont um, last Monday where we highlighted a, a number of uh, issues that were near and dear to the, the town and to the valley as a whole um, where we outlined a number of our priority issues with Priority number one being the uh, basic air ambulance service coverage along with the CT scanner and uh, educated him that uh, on how uh, municipalities like ours uh, where we feel we're unfairly penalized with police service costs and things like that along with uh, um, some other issues that uh, were brought forward with uh, land assessment and things like that. So it was a good information sharing meeting where we uh, brought forward a number of concerns to the their party that uh, hopefully gets brought up at the legislature and puts pressure on to hopefully uh, bring things to a better conclusion for us here in the <coughs> and that's all I have for the meeting. Councilor Delore. Um, not too much to report that hasn't been reported on, but uh, just a question. I understand there's going to be the po a post-mortem on, uh, on our emergency done on Thursday. How was the, the Portions of council that are involved, how are they selected? I have to confirm with Ken, but he wanted two um, council members that were like, had a lot of involvement in it, perhaps. I think that's what he had said, but I would have to confirm that with Ken. Okay, because I just hope there, because you know, if you're not going to have the whole council, probably the most important thing, portion to have would be the, the, the Protective Services Committee and Protective Service Committee isn't those councillors that are that are going. And I was always on the assumption it was going to be the whole council. Well, it's it's not. But if, if it's not going to be the whole of council, because that emergency services falls under Protective Services Committee, it should be that committee dealing with well, it. Well, I'm on that committee. You are that on that committee, yes. So I, I guess I just hope there wasn't cherry picking done when there we have a committee set up for that purpose. Yeah. I think with his intent, like just from his email is that he wants the, the people that like Julie said were actively involved to get the, the basics down and then report it to that committee uh, for any action or go from there. Mm -hmm. I, I guess there could be arguments made on who was actively involved in that and was. I mean, obviously, Glenn and my, myself weren't, and I'm not ex I'm not on that committee, or, but, but, or Phil, but there was there was other councillors that were actively involved that may have some other insights as well. So um, I just hope that there wasn't cherry picking that went on. But uh, as far as wanting to, to get the feedback that, that 
was needed. So, because in, in my, I was trying to figure out how how it came to be that these portions of council were were going to the post mortem and others weren't. So, well, you know, I actually kind of thought the same thing when I read that. I thought, okay, you know, what, we'll go ahead and do this. But if I feel that after that meeting on Thursday that there is other you know, voices that need to be heard, that information that I can, or maybe Council Moria can, Council Moria can, then I think that we need to let him know that and make sure maybe to postpone that and have it with others, uh, members, and invited. Councilor Moria. Well, we're, I agree with you 100%. And while we're on that topic. Who are you pointing at? Him. Oh. Uh, Councilor. Abedin. Councilor Havadin, <laughs> how would you how would you two know what we're thinking and what we saw and what I think? See, uh, as worship, I talked about this briefly today. We're we're going on to a month now, and we haven't had a debriefing yet. And I think that's imperative. Well, like I wrote down a bunch of thoughts, but I'm going to forget what those thoughts mean in time. That a debriefing to me is really important. I don't know in your world maybe. You Think that I don't know if you do. How do we know if we don't do well? It's fresh in our mind. What can we do better? What are our areas of opportunity? And somehow, we'll just think uh, you guys do a wonderful job, but what did Jason see? What did I see? For example. Well, and, and you know what? I I honestly believe that after I read that, I thought, okay, we'll we'll have this thing. We're gonna have to meet soon. Thank you. All of us, because I took. We're never gonna. I mean, this this is the opportunity. Well, then perhaps that if you feel that it should be canceled and, and rescheduled to have all of council there, that I would be against that. I don't feel I need to be there. I wasn't there for the majority but of it. But if anybody else but feels that way, then you have to voice that and say maybe that's what we should do. So they just or do. just include the, the other or two include on Thursday. Them. Yeah, that's all you got to do. Okay. I'm not against that. Council Sam, I don't know if I missed the email or the invitation. The no, I, I have no idea basically what you guys are talking about, to be honest. There's a post-mortem happening on Thursday that only two councillors were invited to. Post-mortem for what? For the Water. emergency. It, it seems odd to me that wouldn't be all-inclusive. Like, even if maybe Jason and I weren't there for the whole thing, we would. I was there when it started up. So, I, and, and you know, if you're only going to include a portion, it should be based on, you know, is this the committee that this falls under, you know. Who called the meeting? Our EMO guy, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I just all know this through hearsay and innuendo. I've never actually seen anything. So that's why the only reason I'm bringing this Me up. Me too. And I, and I don't care to, I'll be, I'm going to be sleeping on, on, on Thursday at once. So, and I'm, like I said, I wasn't there, but I just, in future, if you're going to do something, it should be done by a committee if it's not being done by all of, all of council. And uh, sorry, but I also felt that it wasn't enough time either. Constantly like more. dedicated to it. Yeah, I, I think it's like with the uh, Ari uh, Yimo was looking at to do is so he's trying to get a representative from everybody that was there. Like he's not asking all the plumbers to be there. He's not asking all the laborers that were involved. Not all like if you bring all those players into the room, you're not gonna get anything really figured out enough. And, um, it's just the sample representation from all parties that were. Yeah, the, the small sample. conversations I've had with Ken is it yes. wouldn't have been like a, a cherry picking or nothing against. No, and maybe that was the wrong word to you. I probably shouldn't use that word. That word's gotten me in trouble before. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it like he this exactly what he says. Just he wanted a representative from there to pass along the information. Like to the, the way I take it. <clears throat> the way I take it is that, I guess, and it's up to Lance and myself to talk to you guys, What? how do you take to take that back to that meeting? Was that going to happen? That's what I'm saying right now, that maybe that we should... Because it wasn't on the agenda, and if I hadn't brought it up... You guys, and, and you guys do wonderful, but what have I got written here? Do you, any idea at all? I don't think you do. You know, and I don't have a clue. What he was, I have some idea, because we were paralleling off to him. We're talking four guys. And ultimately fell on the shoulders of council. So I didn't say I don't know if we need the plumbers and the wires. I don't think that, but I think the council, the four council members, the four of us who spent most of that time, including yourself, of course, all that time here, 
I'm, when you say the EMO guy, what does that mean? Is it somebody from Winnipeg, Dauphin? Ken. Ken. Ken, okay. But I, I'm just going to ask those questions. I didn't get the email either. <laughs> I'm not sure where we're going. Okay, we'll so leave it as it is and go from there. Do you, okay, my question is then, do you guys want to be part of that meeting? I think Glenn, I, do, you, do you want to be part of that I, meeting? I can sit in on it. Like, Absolutely. Okay. I think we should all so come. Then should, right we, should we ask Ken to reschedule that meeting so we have more time? Well, I think it's been know. pushed off late enough. Like Wayne says, it should have been done the week after. Thank we'll you. Do with the time we have them. Yeah, okay. I think you have to look for another time. To, okay. When is it where? Here, when? one o'clock on the same day we're going to the condos. You're going here, then you're going to the condos. Yeah, Jason, right. Councilor Sack, can I get a copy of the email? I know what the email I can is. It to read to me too. Because I honestly still can. Yeah. That's all I have to report. I lost track. Of all I have to disturb. <laughs> uh, wonderful, thank you, Councilor. I was going to bring it up. Uh, well, you know, we're just freshly back from a family vacation, so uh, we had a great time. We'll be able to talk about that as the, the weeks go on. Um, uh, this week I have a meeting, my first that I'm going to be able to attend, the Communities That Care meeting. We changed uh, the time to a 6.30 supper meeting, especially just for me. So uh, I'll be attending that one. And uh, the other thing is with the RCMP that I was wondering about uh, when, we, when you guys tra travel down there, um, I guess it has something more or less to do with the billing, I'm assuming, because that's what we've seen here uploaded on, on our uh, all net. But if you look at the all net, I don't know, but it's you can't even read any of that stuff, that information, like it's, uh, I don't know if it's just my computer or what, but you can't, I couldn't make heads or tails out of most of the documents that were there. Um, so I guess it's to do with the billing. They're, they talk about how the billing is going to be and, and, and or how, how it's, it's changed or, yeah. or how it's done basically 70 percent and whatever I, I got all that but the province negotiates that with the federal government correct yeah okay so then do we as not our municipality but the the EMM have there's somebody a committee that sits? there's a committee an RCMP committee okay, okay. Of, of communities over 5,000 that have RCMP contracts that that meets with the province and with the RCMP. So I'm just wondering, like... And Dennis Fedsky, the mayor of Thompson, is the chairman of that Okay, that's good to know. So Dennis... I think it's Dennis Fedsky. It's your name to open this? Not like that. But I'll, you all try again because that's, it didn't look like that at all. You could contact AMM and see whether <coughs> if they've done any kind of report they may have done the websites. I just think that personally, I think that something there has to change. And we know that the province of Saskatchewan does it a little bit differently. They obviously negotiate it different. So then, you know, why why are our buildings not much different, or why are they so much different than what the province of Saskatchewan does? So. Jason, um, was that was that meeting with the RCMP also not to show us a new reporting format? Oh, right. And they didn't show us that, did they? Didn't know we didn't ask about it. We're supposed to. Well, that's they what we said we're supposed something to ask about, about it. it. They said something. Um, I don't think um, Steve has the new reporting yet. I'm just trying to remember. Was the Steve Boss there? That guy that was sitting next to me at AMM? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did he never? Because he said they were going to mention it. Yeah. Yeah. No, we didn't right. talk about it much at mm -hmm. all. But Did I you send them an mentioned. email and ask them when we'll be getting the new reporting? But they talk about the AMM. Okay. Yeah. Can I ask one other question? Okay, just one. Okay. <laughs> With that RCMP, we also talked about scheduling or shifts, split shifts, and all that. And there was, did you guys bring up any of that? That stuff was not either? really. That was really the focus. It was strictly on the billing, and they had a, a copy of a, a, a municipal building and over how everything is worked out in that. Julie will have the new paper copy that we have and she should read it. Yeah, probably should have been on here. Okay. But he can't read yeah, it. Yeah, put there. everything on. Okay, that's it for me. Were you able to just, when you tried to read it, was that before you tried to get that boost in custody? <laughs> <laughs> After. <laughs> okay, uh, pretty much everything has been covered uh, by counselors, so, so thank you for that. Uh, the next one, there's a 
um, bylaw, but I have no resolution for that bylaw. Is that just for discussion? No, it's just to review. Um, okay. It's the election financing bylaw, and if we were wanting to make any changes to that bylaw or do a new bylaw, we have to do it before the end of April. Councilor so I, I just wanted to make sure that you guys were aware of it. So I see this is from 2010. Mm -hmm. So we use that this bylaw in the 2014 yes. election then? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I just wanted to make sure that, you know, there wasn't any changes that anybody wanted to propose. If there's not, that's fine. We can use this bylaw going forward. We if not, but, uh, we need to do it before the end of April. We should probably increase the amount. Mm -hmm. if, if this is seven, well, it'll be eight, eight years old. Mm -hmm. Should we increase it to four and three? Sure. Yeah. Matter, I'm not going to spend that much anyway. Yeah, I can uh, prepare the bylaws. And bring the new. Okay. Okay. We have the check listing. Motion moved by Councilor Jacobson, second by Councilor Delore. Resolve the council as follows: We hereby approve for payment general accounts from check two two zero six one to two two one three four for a total of one hundred and fifty five thousand six twenty nine ninety. And payroll account from check 4170 to 4176 for a total of 107,552.20. Questions to Julia on any of the checks? There's also some uh, responses there from our chief financial officer. 22082, Delage Land and Financial Services. It's not on Terry's list, eh? No, no, no. Mm. As you like, Council, know the uh, on Terry's list, check number 22125 to Tormont Cat. That was not to pay for the, the drilling, that was to repair the driller's truck, which will be charged back to the driller, so we'll be getting that money back. <coughs> it's a payment for a four-copier contract. Oh, okay. Councilor Moore. Um, it's in the CFO's explanations there, but it's check number 22090 from ATAP Infrastructure Management uh, for the emergency operation assistance for during the water. Um, Were the was it clear that like we knew that they were being charged for their time throughout the whole thing? Or oh yeah, okay, definitely. And that that also includes that is the ATAP infrastructure management, the, the person that came on site. That is also the associate engineering help for the emergency is included in that bill as well. Okay, I, I just wanted to be, be sure that we had a lot of people offering assistance and yeah. giving advice, and then all of a sudden sending us a bill for unsolicited. Yeah, no, this one was. Expected. Okay. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. All in favor of the resolution? Carried. <coughs> Motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, second by Councillor Delore, resolve the Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission audit financial statements be received. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, second by Councillor Orr, resolve a Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission budget be received. Discussion? Somebody had a question about the airport budget. Yeah, um, I think we should vote against this, and I'll be voting against it and send it back to the Commission. Um, just for the fact we had a $44,000 uh, surplus from, uh, from last year, or $44,000 surplus from last year. Um, Perhaps we could use some of that surplus to pay for some of the the one time uh, or what like you know explosion proof light uh, you know, crack scenes pay for some of the uh, the uh, things to get our budget down for 2018 because otherwise that's a uh, what is that a seven thousand dollar increase for the town of Swan River 
and I, and I understand the, the airport budget fluctuates every year because craft sending gets, gets done every second year, but if we've built up a little bit of a surplus, we may as well use it for for the for the airport. Uh, Councillor, I think one of the, now that it's coming back, and one of the thoughts where we, you're right, we just do some of the crack ceiling every other year. Mm -hmm. So rather than raise the budget a year from now to pay for the crack surface, we would use it. No, I'm saying we still do the crack ceiling, ceiling this year. Yeah, but when the next year comes, you can use that money that's been put away to pay for it. Use it this year. I mean, why not use it this year? I'm not sure. Oh. Well, I, th I think we should... Uh, Send it back and use some of that for because I'm sure I'm sure there's is, is there other surplus in addition to this? What, what's the total surplus of the airport it's commission? Hundred and some thousand. Hundred and some thousand. So like that's dead money sitting. Yeah, that's exactly. That's dead money that is it's it was put towards the airport. It may as well be used at the airport for these things. Okay. Some of these are one-time expenses like new new uh, lights and stuff. It's not like you put new lights in every year. So bulletproof lights. Bulletproof lights. <laughs> I would suggest that this is the first one is to receive the the, the airport uh, budget. The next one is to approve it, and then we would table. We want to approve it. There's two resolutions. Oh, there's two. Okay. Yeah, the other ones to approve payment. Ability. Okay. All in favor of receiving it? Carried. Now we have the motion moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Sapper, resolve at Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission 2018 levy in the amount of $25,1653 be approved for payment. Discussion? I think this is the one we should defeat now then. Yeah. I agree. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Defeated. Can we uh, do this through email to the members of, of the Airport Commission saying if there's a request that we be, uh, use that 7000 and save another whole meeting. Okay, we can try that. Okay, thank you. Okay, we have the motion moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Sackle, resolve the Swan Valley District Recreation Commission budget be received. Discussion, all in favor? Carry it. The motion moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Sackle, to resolve the Swan Valley District Recreation Commission 2018 levy in the amount of 22176 be approved for payment upon receipt of the 2017 audit financial statements. Discussion? All favor? <coughs> Carried. Motion moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Sackle, Resolve the Chief Administrative Officer be authorized to sign the Veterans Community Hall label or use agreement with Smack Dab. Discussion? Councillor Morio, then Councillor Deloria. Um, point of clarification on here where it's, uh, it says Smack Dab will, cover, will have the exclusive use of the label or uh, while renting the food processing center. Um, for clarification, is that is that just during the time she's physically in the building renting it, or is it as from like now until she stops renting it on an annual basis? She uh, doesn't feel that um, um, if she's paying that $3,000 um, that she should not have exclusive use of the machine. But I mean, if, if, if she was paying for it, but it will be, in the end she won't because as she rented it, she would have, we, we would have worked that off. Like she, she'd be renting at a lower rate, correct? Remember in her original proposal, when she had said that she would be renting it at, at the first year, of, I forget where, at a lower rate until the that until $3, until that three thousand dollars is, is the town pays it off basically. What was her intention to to pay the three thousand dollars? But she also, if she paid, she wanted to she wanted the town basically to pay her back through a lower rental fee. That was one of her proposals. Yeah. Proposals. Well, I won't be voting for it with, uh, with exclusive use. I can't. I can't see that either. That, that um, to use to use the towns to get oh, access to a provincial grant to get taxpayers' dollars to uh, an exclusive use of equipment is. Uh, I don't think that's what we're here for. Um, if it's going to be public dollars accessed through the town of Swan River, it should be accessible to. Anybody and everybody. That was the whole purpose of having our hall manager uh, be trained 
and be able to vet these people not uh, so is that not happening no not by this agreement no. she wants to be the only one to ever be able to use it and if if um, other um, processors will be able to use it then she doesn't want to have to pay you know that 25 percent but she never was really going to have to pay because we were going to be paying her back through the lower rental fee. <clears throat> In one of her proposals. So she doesn't want this proposals. if we don't go with this? Is that well, if, the, if the town is willing to pay some of the $3,000, then she would be okay with you know, not having exclusive use. But if she's going to pay the $3,000, she wants to have exclusive use. And Jane from uh, uh, the Food Processing Center in Portage, I believe, Jane Kilgard, she's been dealing with Carly on this. And I talked to both of them on the phone today. And um, the, you know, Jane's worked really hard to get this machine for Carly's business. And she also doesn't feel that you know, there should be anyone else using it. Well, so the province is okay with, with using taxpayers' dollars the province of Manitoba is okay with having taxpayers' this dollars Jane, yeah. to support one business and one business alone. I wonder when the tax province of Manitoba is getting Council busier. Jane, and then Council Council White. That, that I was going to kind of go on the same tune with, with that because, oh. you know, like if she's asking for exclusive rights to this labeler that there's public funds from the province of Manitoba that are coming to pay for, mm -hmm. then that the right would mean that if somebody else came along and said, hey, I have a business and I want to use that label that's been provided by the province of Manitoba, 75% or whatever it might have been, then we can't deny that. The province is saying that they're in favor of us denying well, I think there's something wrong there. I think we're reading it, p p perhaps you're reading it wrong. I don't know that. Smack dab will have exclusive use of the labeler while renting the fruit processing center. So when she's using it, she's got exclusive yeah. use. That's, That's good. Just what David asked. Did you said she is the time that she's she renter. She's not oh, continuously she's renting the center. Exactly. That's so right. she comes in tomorrow to rent it, she uses it exclusively. That's the way I would not going to share it with Councilor Mario doing his pickles on that day. Well, exactly. The rest of the time she's not in there, we but use it's, it. It's during the time that she's renting it because there will come a time where she's not going to be renting it. She doesn't it rent it every day. day. But I mean, so if she rents but, it on Monday, can I use it Tuesday? No. Well, that's not that's what that not, says, That's there. not what I interpreted. Yeah. So, that's what I read that either. To be. Um, yeah, because I said that if what happens if six months down the road we have another processor that is very interested in processing at our food process, mm -hmm. processing center and wants to use a labeler, you know, then, then we're, you know, what do we say? We turn away that person because uh, one other business says. has exclusive that's use. That's so what happened to the, her dad teaching prospective people to use it? Is, did she not say? No, she never said that. No, she never quite agreed to it. She did, she we did, did talk about it a little bit. Yeah. yeah, because I remember there was a couple of you that had said, you know, well, would you be open to discussion um, if someone else came along and wanted to use it? Right. You know, we did discuss that. Yes, we bit. did. And I reminded them today on the phone that we did have that but discussion. She didn't. Councilor Sackle. Mm. I think if they want exclusivity, they should just purchase the machine themselves. And if they want to use a safe storage in our in our building, I don't see any problem with them leaving it there, and we would have no access to it, and nobody would have access to it. But they purchase the whole thing on their own and don't involve us. Like that's mm -hmm. if they want exclusivity, then then that's it. I'm so uh, it's really irrelevant. It's not irrelevant. Regardless of what she says, this last sentence says she has exclusive use when she's renting it. And the opposite of that is when you're not renting it, other people can use it. And I'm not an English major, but I think I'm right. I agree with how the, the agreement is written. I would interpret it that way as well. Then let's but, sign it. It's but too that's, bad. She's that's agreed to it. That's not how they interpret it. <laughs> You're going to have an issue. <laughs> so that's, that's the only way it can be interpreted. When she was here that night, she says, as long as we're renting here from year to year, she wanted the exclusive use to yeah. it yeah. Uh, until her business got big enough where she had to move on to a different location. Maybe we should table it until we uh, get the... Yeah, we gotta, there's a deadline to purchase this. When? 
15th of March? Yeah, we actually have until March 31st right. to provide to the government uh, proof that we've paid for it. For um, so, from that last line, exclusive use of the labor while renting. So, she's going to rent it every day to no. give her exclusive? No. 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 So that's, that's, that's to me, nice. it's self explanatory. Yeah. I, would, I would sign this and say, you sign it. I like, I, I like being on the same page. I don't want to have our interpretation and their interpretation and then trying to deal with this after it's purchased. I want it clear before. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. yeah. Set it straight. And if and if we were you know, if we were to get this all straight, there should also be in this agreement there should be something about how how she gets a lower rental rate until the the thirty three twenty two fifty is paid off by the town. Because so basically we're borrowing money from her. So it also says we'll provide training, right, mm -hmm. to Lana so that she can assist in the day-to-day -day maintenance. Mm -hmm. Who's she going to train if they won't let anybody else use it? She's not training anybody, she's maintaining. Maintaining. Day-to-day -day maintenance. Yeah. So what are we going to do with it? Uh, well, as it stands, I would go to defeat it. Same here. Either like, send it back or... or we put it on hold? Yeah. Got to the end of the month, and uh, we, have so one we got we got one more we got one more meeting. So That's it. and she could give her our feelings. Yeah, tell her this wouldn't have passed the way it stands. So like yeah, unless so she interprets it, yeah. it. Well, we can defeat we can defeat this because you know, we can have, have another agreement come yeah, forward. Yeah, it would have to be a different agreement. Yeah, yeah I well, think it's it, I think it's perfect the way it is. But I have a lot of agreement with Councilor Sackle's idea. If she's not thinking that way, she better know how we're thinking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the agreement should should reflect it without beyond a shadow of a doubt, even if you have to use examples. Even I think, if you have to I, I, I agree. Better. The way the English language works, that's how I would. Mm -hmm. And I we could catch her, but I don't like catching people. I don't think it's catching like that. I think it's it's, it's what it says. Yeah. But if but she doesn't talk that's what it says. And she has no intention of do working it that way then. That's okay, right. then that's her decision. I'm I'm aware of what they want, yeah. Okay, all in favor of the resolution? Opposed? Defeated. That'll speak to her also. <laughs> Just I think you have to reinforce that council's not prepared to have give her exclusive use of it, that if somebody else the day after her wants to use it, it will run into them. Who has been trained? By her and or especially when there's like under like it sounds like there was a lot of work advocating to get this done, but we were little, it's our building and it's supposed to be our thing, and we were the last to find out. So we have to uh, next resolution is to purchase the actual label it. That one to be tabled. Okay, the motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen, resolved the purchase of a model JD A one labeler from JD. Progress Industries for a total of 13,954.50 be approved. Discussion? Motion to table it. Motion. Okay. It's resolution 218.111. Okay. The motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen, and all with the Swan Valley Debt Services Board budget be received. Discussion? No increase in the Debt Services Board for the last many years. Long as I've been on it. Yeah. All in favor? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor Morial, second by Councillor Delory, resolve that resolution 218-111 be tabled. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen, resolve the Swan Valley Vet Services Board uh, contribution in the amount of five thousand nine hundred eighty-two ninety-nine be approved for payment. Discussion. All in favor? Carried. Motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor Friesen, resolve the Manitoba Communities in Blue, two thousand eighteen registration in the amount of four hundred dollars be approved. Discussion. All in favor? Carried.
Motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor Friesen. Uh, resolved pursuant to section 152.3 of the Municipal Act. Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public discussion. All in favor? Carried.